There are many things to hate about big businesses and corporations and Wall Street in this country, that's for sure. You, you could go through a laundry list. You look at what was happening uh, with GameStop and some of these other stocks where um, the Reddit folks <laughs> and the kind of private traders got involved and basically played the game that the street has played for generations, but now all of a sudden, when the common man and woman gets involved, now we gotta pump the brakes on the fraud. Now we gotta pump the brakes on the bullshit. Funny how that works. And you see it all the time. Like we can see it certainly now in this country specifically when it comes to the pandemic. And this isn't even necessarily a political thing. It is more so just a basic kind of common sense thing. You have two forms of economy. No matter what, our country is socialist. It is either socialist for the rich and fuck off to everyone else, or it is socialist for everyone else and the rich gotta pay in more. And we know more and more we gravitate towards that first one. And you've seen that play out via different stimulus packages, what have you, that you know when it comes to tax breaks and PPP uh, loans and et cetera and giveaways to help prop up the markets, to help prop up businesses, especially massive corporations, nobody in Congress, nobody in the previous administration, and let's be clear here, nobody in the current administration would object or push back, and they don't. But all of a sudden when it comes to regular people struggling, starving, potentially having utilities shut off, being unable to pay their bills, being financially plowed and ruined because of something that was out of their control, then all of a sudden we talk about responsibility and we talk about can't spend all this money, it's reckless. Yeah, it's not runaway when it's for the rich, but when it's for everybody else, it's runaway crap. Our typical crony, capitalistic, really socialist system for the rich. Where corporate greed matters, where the corporations have all the power. It's sickening, but never changes. It's only gotten worse over the years. So you can imagine my absolute lack of any type of surprise at all that the report started coming out last week that the WWE wasn't giving promotions or pay raises to some of their kind of rank and file office team and you know people that work in Titan Towers, those folks. Not the wrestlers or the talents, but the people that work in the office, that do the administration, that plan events, like all of those things. Those people weren't going to get raises, those people weren't gonna get promotions, and that's apparently for, not just now, but for the at least undefined future. And that's horseshit, let's be clear. And I know you're going to certainly probably have some people that either A, uh, just buy into big business bullshit or B, our true blue WWE sheep that will come into the comments and try to point out things such as, well, you know, the company's probably going to bring back furloughed workers at least to some degree in the next few months. So that's going to increase expenses. And as the company goes on the road in the future at some point in time in 2021, that's going to increase their operating expenses. So they had to tighten the belts and they had to cut costs somewhere. Bullshit. Bullshit. This is nothing more than greed. Lazy, unadulterated, selfish, corporate greed. It is nothing more than that. Because that whole argument doesn't hold water. That whole argument really doesn't make any sense. When you look at the actual financials of WWE, even though it came in below arbitrary industry stock market Wall Street projections in Q4, they still had a pretty good earnings quarter overall. And when you look at the year of 2020, God damn, they had record numbers and record profits, even with all those live events being canceled and having to go into this pandemic environment of where they're doing shit in the Thunderdome. Why is that? Because they were realizing 
the windfall coming from the new television deals that they got late in 2019 that actually started to be realized in 2020. And the fact was they went through all these cost-cutting measures and frankly, they didn't need to do nearly as much when it came to furloughing folks. But again, <laughs> that's leadership in today's corporate world. Instead of sacrificing yourself so that others may gain, we reward it via Wall Street, via bottom lines. We use people and headcount to balance the books. We do all these sick, gross things that create and foster an environment where people are on edge and they're guarded and they're defensive and it takes away from a collaborative environment and all these other things. Leadership now in so many companies will sacrifice others so that they may gain and these shareholders may, may gain. You know, it comes down to the philosophy of bastards like Milton Friedman. And the whole concept in the 70s and 80s specifically were talked all about shareholder supremacy. You know, and, and then it's just a ridiculous way to conduct your business. It is a reality that when you have shareholders, you have to answer to them. You have to deliver to numbers. I understand that. But that cannot be and should not be the sole primary motivating factor like it was for the previous several decades. Because it creates and fosters and nurtures these types of toxic environments where a company could have record profits. And oh, by the way, by the way, you're telling people in your office that they can't get promoted, they don't get raises, they may be eligible for performance-related bonuses, which is code for, yeah, we might throw you something, but that bone's going to be smaller than it has been in previous years. All the while, not only having record profits, but not even beginning to realize the windfall that's going to come from the Peacock TV deal. Like that takes a lot of balls. That takes a lot of guts and a lot of selfishness and cowardice and just flat out, you're a dick mojo to sit there and tell people that probably give their everything while they're there to that company that work very hard behind the scenes that this company is profiting and in a great financial position, arguably a better financial position than they have ever, ever, ever have been. But you're not going to reward that with promotions and raises. Like, that's just going to kill morale. It shouldn't be a surprise that you heard about last Friday at SmackDown that everybody seemed really angry and on edge behind the scenes. Well, no fucking shit. Because even if it doesn't affect the wrestlers or talents now, these are people that they know, that they're familiar with, that they interact with, that they view as co-workers, friends, even family in some cases. And now you're sitting there and saying, okay, they're going to do this to these people. You know this crap's potentially going to come down the pike. You know goddamn good and well it does. You know, because this is Vince, you know damn good and well that the salaries they're offering are not commensurate with the other revenue increases and expense decreases that they saw in 2020. You know this. You know this. You don't even need to know the particulars. You just need to know how that cocksucker Vince McMahon works. Like now you've created an environment where the wrestlers and talents are saying, are we next? Are you going to sit there and tell us that we do really good things and we drive high merch numbers and our royalties are going to get cut down? That our downside guarantees are going to be less? You already took away the Twitch and Cameo crap. So you can't make money that way. Like, yeah, it's a shitty thing to do. And now you're telling those office people that 2020 truly was a terrible year to have a great year. Except if you're one of the executives in the company because you know damn good, sure and well, that Vince and others are going to be taken care of one way or another. It is the epitome of our current corporate business environment in this country and it's absolutely sickening. Where's the profit sharing? Where's the revenue sharing? You can't sit there and use this crutch that times are tough or anything like that when you have record profits. You can't sit there and say, well, we got to tighten our belts up because we're going to add 100, 150 million in operating expenses when you just generated an additional two billion or billion dollars over five years, 200 million a year for something you already had. You created and generated additional revenue with the Peacock deal. 
Like, yeah, you won't get the money from the one the one point one or so million domestic subscribers, but you're still having the network for the international subscribers. And so no matter what the point I'm getting at here is, you've generated all of this additional revenue. And even when you talk about the expenses, when you look ahead to 2021, okay, you bring back some of the furlough workers. Okay, you start in the second half of the year potentially being able to slowly wean into live events and all of this. You're still making a killing. Like, who in the hell would want to work in an environment that they know the company, from a financial aspect, is arguably doing better than it ever has? Better than it ever has producing a year in 2020 in spite of all the challenges and all the changes that happened of record profits. And you're saying, we can't give you any more money. So people that may have played a part or played some small role in helping to realize those extra hundreds of millions and honestly billions of dollars over the years in additional revenue to the company's bottom line, which is going to please the shareholders and do everything else and put the company on a much more solid footing in the long term. Vince McMahon, and this is a Vince decision, along with the board, sure, but it's Vince at the end of the day. Because nothing happens in that company, let's be clear, unless it's Vince McMahon's idea or Vince McMahon ultimately has input on it and signs off on it. Vince doesn't feel like his office people are worthy of raises and promotions at a time of record revenues, record profits for his company. That is gross. That is greed. That is being a business bastard unnecessarily to the highest power. Like to those people that have been furloughed, honestly, WWE should have been called to task on it. They could have brought those folks in months ago. They never had to get rid of them. Don't buy into that bullshit of, well, it helps them cut this much. They didn't need it. That's the point. They're doing this strictly from a greed standpoint to maximize how much they get. And you can say, well, isn't that the name of the game with business? It's to some degree, yes, and certainly to some degree, no. Because now you're creating an environment that long term is going to be not encouraging people to give their absolute best. Why would they? I'm going to have a great year and the company's not going to reward me. So you're going to get to a situation where long term, just like so many other things, it could have some potentially damaging ramifications and repercussions. And if you're looking to have the best and brightest people, which at the end of the day, let's be clear, I talk about it in my current shoot job, if you will. You've got people side, you've got process side, and you've got maybe a tech side. But reality comes down to people and processes. Too many businesses focus on the process side. They say, we're going to focus on processes, people be damned, or the people will come along on the journey. Whereas, instead of managing the processes, if you manage the people, your processes will work better, and you create this type of environment that people want to be a part of. You create this type of environment that people want to be a part of. You create this type of environment that fosters inclusion, that fosters innovation. All of these things that are great and wonderful and much more impactful from a positive standpoint to any big corporation's bottom line. And the WWE does the old dumb dick opposite and tries to leverage people to balance the books when they don't need to do so. That's what's so gross about it. It'd be one thing if they were breaking even. It would be one thing if Q4 was disappointing and it wasn't disappointing. It only didn't fail. It only failed to meet arbitrary projections by financial experts. Like, what the fuck does that matter? It just speaks to the whole fraud and joke that is Wall Street, that is the financial game. To sit there and not give your folks raises and promotions that they've earned and they deserve and they certainly should see some type of windfall from with the record revenues, record profits that you've made, just speaks to why nobody should want to work for Vince McMahon. He is a bastard. And not the bastard that you should respect. Not the bastard that you sit there and admire. The type of bastard that when you think about yourself in a business, if you ever get into a business of yourself or you do run a business or a part of a big corporation, you point to him and you point to him as the example of this is not the old crusty curmudgeon cocksucker that I want to turn into someday.
WWE should do the right thing, pay out their money, give these raises and promotions to people that probably deserved it. This is independent and unrelated to the on-screen product. You can think about whatever you want, but the bottom line is, is it's a bastard thing to do and WWE should be ashamed of this decision and publicly shamed for it.